Was it seduction or illusion? Deception or murder? Nothing is what it seems in a town like Twin Peaks. Star Kyle McLaughlin, Michael Anke, Laura Flynn Boyle, Sherilyn Fenn, and Joan Chen. And you can fall back into the mystery or begin your search for the first time every Tuesday night with a new episode hosted by a panel of superfans. Watch live for the audio commentary. No one is innocent in a town like Twin Peaks. Welcome to Live from Sparkwood 21. This series chronicles the cult classic 1990 television series Twin Peaks, created by David Lynch and Mark Frost. Joining me on this journey are super fans. Last call, Troy Pacelli. Hello, hello. Netters Network. Good evening, everyone. And Age Boomer. Hello, hello. So slide into a booth at the Double R Diner and order a damn fine cup of coffee and a heavenly slice of cherry pie as we watch and discuss episode 15 of season 2, Slaves and Masters. Already in the chat, we have FKHC2005, Curtis Selby, Lester San Jose the Skeptic Tank, Connie Cleary, Big Al Presents, Sci-Fi Mombi, Dee Dee Myers Jr., and Geek Flag with Nate Nose, 1973. All right. Well, we are back. Um, and, uh, unfortunately, uh, to say, or uh, maybe fortunately, depending on your point of view, uh, we have a new big bad in the guise of one Wyndham Earl. What's great about Wyndham Earl is, and the whole storyline, is it's a it's one of these these great ones where you are, you get a lot of backstory as the show goes along, right? So it's like you know you you thought you knew you thought you knew Dale Cooper, you thought you know. Okay, it was no, 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 no. There's this whole dark backstory that you didn't even know about. So every time you find out something new about Wyndham Earl, you're going to find out something new about Dale Cooper too. I just think it's good storytelling. Right, and uh, this was uh, a point in the show. At least we're back in the day. I felt that the show really needed kind of a shot in the arm because it was, you know, they were starting to move away to these plot lines that were moved out of town. Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing these plot lines where it came off like they were being quirky just for the sake of being quirky. 
Yeah. But it is at this point where we are finally starting to see what seem to be all of these sort of random loose ends yeah. start to come together of you know, kind of along with the fact that we have Linda Merle, we also have uh, the Thomas Eckert character played by David Warner, who is yep. this kind of ghost from Josie's past. We now know that Andrew Packard is still alive. How's that going to affect things? He's kind of a wild card now. So, um, to me, you know, watching this show 30 years later, uh, we're starting to see the program be true to form. It's kind of dovetailing back around to what the first season was. It's much more mysterious and who do you suspect, who do you trust, you know. Because another thing that's going to come into play in the middle of all this is the individual who shot Cooper back at the end of season one still has not been identified. And that's true. going to play into things. True, so true. we have we have all of these what appear to be loose ends. And this is the point in season two where they're all going to start to come together. And um, while we seemed to have meandered with uh, the storyline with James, which I have a little bit more respect for now that David Lynch has said that Mulholland Drive and Twin Peaks right. take place in the same universe, because yeah. I felt that it, that was Twin Peaks dipping a toe into the world of Mulholland Drive. Agreed. Absolutely. You know, even though I obviously not having the advantage of Mulholland Drive being a thing um, when we were watching the show the first time. But obviously, because Mulholland Drive was originally meant to be a series, yep. um, obviously that was something that was very much on the mind of David Lynch at the time. He was definitely uh, uh, formulating... Um, and and I'm wondering, you know, if if Mulholland Drive had gone to series, would we have seen characters intersect? Yeah, exactly. And I and and the the, the reality is, the the movie is just a a, a shadow, just an echo <laughs> of what it might have actually been. So it's not like you can look at it and say, you know, oh, okay, well, that's basically your such and such character, and that's basically so and so from. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way, because you actually even need the metadata to know that the Kathy Selwyn character was originally supposed to be um, uh, Audrey. You know, this was supposed to be a kind of a spin-off for for Audrey's character. Which is absolutely not what happens, you know. It's so you know, Mahan Drive is just a completely separate universe. But you look at the the um, the framing elements of the world of Mulholland Drive, and you go, absolutely, I could see this being the exact same world as the one that Twin Peaks is set in. We're also going to have to uh, do a, uh, not only look at Mulholland Drive, we're also going to have to look at Inland Empire as well. Yeah. I would like to say hello to everyone uh, joining us tonight on Twitter. Please feel free to uh, hit the like, subscribe, and of course follow along with us on uh, Cosme. Yep. Yep, which I do have booted up, and I'm ready to go ahead and share. Let me actually go into the sharing mechanism. And hello to Disney Shipherder. 
Uh, Curtis Shelby says, I've decided to go crazy and be a Confederate general. Well, there you go. Happened at some point. Exactly. All right. Hmm. <coughs> All right. So we're going to. Uh, oh, oops. whoa. Oh, sorry about that. What's going on here? I, we're tripping. I need to, to hey, close on, windows. Tripping? Is that, yeah. a, is that another sequel to Breaking? <laughs> uh, yes. yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> It, it's it's like breaking, only not as fluid. Right, right, right. <laughs> they fall down a lot. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's it's a pity that Golden Globes didn't last in the nineties. They would have funded a Lynch movie, I think. Right, Golden Globes. <laughs> they let Mar they let uh, uh, Cassavetes do whatever he wanted. Actually. True. True. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. There we go. Get it right this time. There we go. Whoa, it's like I'm looking into the Tron world when you do that. Yeah, exactly. Inception. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's Inception. Oh. All right. Uh, shall I start the countdown? Yes. Absolutely. All right. In five, four, Three, two, two and three sixteenths. Didn't make like ready. And go. There was a huge rift between Kyle McLaughlin and Flappy because one time he caught Flappy taking a bath in his hair jelly. <laughs> not, 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 not cool, dude. Oh, gosh. Is that a steel mill? Uh, no, it's a, uh, it is a, um, um, it's, widget it's factory. A, uh, <laughs> it's a sawmill. Sawmills. It's, oh, yeah, okay. it's, and specifically, uh, a sawmill, uh, <laughs> you, I, I guess the implication is supposed to be the Packard mill, right? But the actual Packard mill wasn't, uh, just a lumber mill. It was a paper mill. That's, uh, you know. Mm. Something you don't think about, you know, but yeah, because yeah, well, they keep mentioning the sawmill, right? I guess yeah. Exactly, exactly. So they do make saws. <laughs> I I is I you know it's it's meant to be a lumber mill, you know, because it's supposed right. to be a lumber town. Um, which you know, of course, of course, most of the Northwest was. We have that lovely hotel made out of all the hard wood, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. I posted in the MeWe group uh, a little document uh, documentary about the uh, the uh, the Shalish Lodge, the Great Northern. Ooh. Yeah, this you you can't say that Lynch isn't a, a an awesome visual storyteller. He really sets the uh, the mood. Yep, and David Warner. Let's be creepy. They ever make a Star Trek chess set? I've got one. Okay. And hello, Penny. Oh, hey, Penny. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> A car, yeah. yeah.
took three of them to come out and tell her that her husband died? Uh, he gets a lot of attention because he was a rich guy. <laughs> they didn't even wait to make sure the cops were gone before they started talking. I know. I just want it over with. Really? Do you think it's ever going to be over with? That's not how these things work. How long before she marries her next rich guy? <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's the guys in the uniforms all smoking cigars? I have no idea. Is that what deleted scene says? The weirdest weirdness for weirdness sake, maybe. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. What you do is you go back to Twin Peaks, you call up the Bookhouse Boys and get them to help you. What opera is that? Is that Madame Butterfly? No idea. I don't. I'm not a big opera fan, so I don't know it. That'd be an interesting one if that's the one he picked. Nothing is over until we decide it is. Was it ever over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Hell no. Uh, Germans? <laughs> Can't believe it. He's on a roll. <laughs> Jeez. Wonder if a vet's a real person that she like went to school with or something. Funny anonymous hedgehog was it Jet Jaguar? <laughs> How about Leo Stein? <laughs> Bobby, stop acting tough because he's not good at it. You're right. <laughs> Didn't ask your opinion. <laughs> it's like everyone in town knows that those two are stuffing. Right. Yeah, the, the, the some of the secrets are not that <laughs> secret. It needs to be slapped around. <laughs> right. Get a life punk. Oh, yeah. Here's our man. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, he doesn't hit him. Okay. Oh, Elmer seems to have changed his tune. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very interesting the way their their uh, relationship is very much pivoted. Hey, he didn't hug Coop. <laughs> I worried about Coop. Big C. <laughs> What's in the box? Yeah. 
Yeah. Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow's head. See, I, I tell you, I always think of um, Kiss Me Deadly when I think of what's in the box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Or what's in the box in Belle de Jour? Mm. <laughs> Although, though, in that case, I decided it's probably best not to know. Yeah, I loved uh, that style of lighter. It's just they're very inefficient. You're constantly filling them with, with lighter fluid, even if you don't light them very often. Well, okay, Gibson, there's no explanation for Albert's turnabout. Uh, it's implied. Um, after after he was a complete dick to, uh, to, to Truman, he does his whole, you know, talk about spirituality and stuff like that and he probably got his animus out of his system that's what i yeah. expect happened okay yeah. basically yeah and and it's it's interesting because the as much as of of a jarring turnaround as it is for albert um it's the response from truman that i find even more interesting well, it's it's like if men have a fight, then they go out for a beer afterwards, right? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of a great uh, way of uh, analogizing it. Yeah. He has rocks in his cabin. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he, he actually is. Yeah. He hit him in the wound, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd be freaking out, too, if I was him. It's like, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be the big bad here, and this guy's freaking me out. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> he was the big bad, but he's not the smartest uh, guy in the room. They're both missing a few crayons out of the box. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, just absolutely. This is why I make the Joker comparison. You should see him in a movie called The Void, where he goes into like complete Hellraiser mode. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, now, was, that a, yeah. was that a more recent movie? I think I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. The guys that did um. Astron 6, I think, made that, or some of the people in Astron 6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shock collar. Yep, electro shock collar. <laughs> He's like, oh, crap, I gotta do this stuff again? Oh, gruel. What we'll all be eating in a few years. I'm sorry. Wait. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I wonder if when he says gruel, he's just being... You know, it, it's generic mush, or if he literally means that it's gruel. Like, you know... Onion, onion slop. It probably actually is gruel. <clears throat> it looks really orange. So she. <coughs> Morning lighting, I guess.
Oh, she said. I'm going to say, yeah, these two very, very tragic characters with a very, very tragic story. I mean, that really is sad. So what, are you going to divorce your wife? The one you feel guilty about? Well... <laughs> That's where it gets really, really weird, right? Yeah. Oh, it's weird. When I'm looking at Twin Peaks on our big screen, uh -huh. they look kind of orange. When I look at it on my laptop, they look normal. Oh, sure. Different displays. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to get in bed with them. <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't even know what an airplane slam is, but it sounds painful. Above the head, spin him around, slam. Oh I'm my presuming. gosh. Yeah. I've seen wrestlers do that. absolutely nothing to say about the two of them in bed together. But, but listen to what she's saying about <laughs> how she messed up Hank. Because he was going to hurt Eddie. I got mad. That... Does Mike think that? Yeah. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> she could get a second career in the WWF. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage wouldn't know what hit him, right? <laughs> Hank, she could become a superhero for crying out loud. There you go. Meanwhile, badly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is it called Joe? I don't know. Curtis says Nadine would be more fun than most Marvel heroines. Yeah. <laughs> That's for darn sure. What the heck is all that? Uh, Catherine's dry cleaning? <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. 
<laughs> Paprika and goulash. That's all you need to no. know. Right. <laughs> you were not in Paprika because that was an anime. Right. Okay. Yes, I, that was the great Satoshi Kone's last movie. Yeah. Okay, what thread is that? Don't know. Thread or hair. And she, he just took Pete's glove. <laughs> and hello to Orville Nation. Hey, PJ. Good to see ya. Shot eye there. Yep. And Johnny, long time no see. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we can can't, it's like can't you just like smack him upside the head or something <laughs> See, I like that. She's not going to be bamboozled. Yeah. 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 Some of the characters here grew up pretty, pretty quick. <laughs> yep. She's a smart girl. Yeah. And what she literally just did was get him back on the track of we need to help my father. people just walked out of the room because no. they went they went down the hall past her while she was talking to her her uncle <laughs> maybe they came back i don't know yeah. <laughs> it's the worst rendition of this song i've ever heard i know <laughs> it sounds sick there are uh, that he can't play uh trumpet a bugle. Whatever. Same difference to me. Or does it strike me as a southerner? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, look who's at the bar. Mrs. Marsh, good evening. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> with a little umbrella in it. <laughs> she doesn't care. This is when you reach back, grab a hold of his yeah. cojones, and squeeze hard. Yeah. <laughs> He's not a nice man. Well, especially, you know, it's time to go a little Han Solo on his ass. He just told you he'll kill you. <laughs> that makes the, the whole I feared for my life defense uh, quite plausible. <laughs> and see the whole the whole thing with this the threads makes zero sense so you're telling me that the threads <laughs> that were found on the, the the coat were still there after coming back from the dry cleaners some these are bad dry cleaners the, yeah there's a lot of you know it's just well we we need to connect dots here so just accept it Uh, what fight did you forget? He got hit by uh, uh, Jean Renault. Mm. Because remember, it's only been a few days since that happened. Right, exactly. Yeah, they do a pretty decent job of keeping details like that uh, pretty consistent. <laughs> yeah, one big ice cream cone. She probably took it away when she was trying to make the place fancy. Right? <laughs> now she's putting it back. Possibly. <laughs> Curtis Selby, Chupacabra? <laughs> he fought Sting. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Hank's going back to the Huskow. Um, I would have to say this would never be on network television again because I don't think that uh, Lynch wants to work with terrestrial television. He's He's got very serious problems with it. I don't know uh, if anybody wants to work with terrestrial television. Well, that's true. Now. That's true. Um, when we get to uh, Fire Walk With Me, we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah. That, and uh, if we ever get back to Mulholland Drive, I think that's an even yeah. bit more damning uh, indictment at uh, television than... Uh, True. Yeah. And hello, Lady Mist. Emoji oh, hello, queen. hello. She's terrified. Yikes. Okay. Oh, yeah, you have. <laughs> Down Marlena. Head. Big delicacy yep. in medieval times. Dude, she can make the rings. Yep. It's not that difficult. <laughs> oh, I've never tried, so I don't know. Was she an electric boogaloo? Or the other one? No. The mouth breather? No. I was kidding, honey. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we know. Yeah, you're not safe here. <laughs> Criticism of Gandalf for a hot blonde woman, and I'm like, do not give Amazon any ideas. Oh God, yeah. If he was smart, he'd have a recording of a dice on him. Yeah. If only he was wired. Hey!
And Dune. Oh, she goes up easy. Yeah. There definitely is an element of, of uh, he's in control and she doesn't have a choice in the matter. She may be a willing victim, but she is a victim. I mean, and it really does make sense from their point of view. You kill him, he can never testify against you, they're not going to look any further. It really does, you know, put an end to the story. <coughs> wow. Yeah, exactly. Humble horse. <coughs> Get out of here. You don't know what you're doing. Well, Nate, the two can be true at the same time. It is kind of funny because uh, for him to go, yes, I agree, amen. Ulysses says, Grant, immediately after the war, ran for president. <laughs> I surrender. Of course you do. basically got the resolution he needed here. <coughs> the Real Walden Nation live. Welcome, welcome. Good to see yeah. you here. <laughs> and you, and you, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there's always Wizard of Oz references in David Lynch productions. That's there's gone with the wind reference too here too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was all very convoluted, but that's really what this was all about. He, he he was in control. Everything spiraled away from him. He couldn't deal with it, so it's a coping mechanism. Yeah. 
Well, he doesn't have a job anymore. He only needs. You were there, and you were there, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was only hired to take care of the crazy, and so uh, Lover Boy over there doesn't have a job anymore. Let me go back to being a high school student. Yeah, so the analogy I made last week of him showing up at the cabin and, you know, very Frankenstein-esque. Then, of course, they called him Leo Stein earlier. This is very, very Frankenstein. And he's getting everything he deserves. Nutter butter. I like nutter butters. <laughs> uh, dude, step off. I saw them first. Yeah, right. So they're my chicks. No. Um, sorry. We don't even know that guy. Yeah, but he saw you first, so you're his chicks. Yeah. That's actually from a movie. <laughs> Meanwhile, you two dipsticks have still failed to kill dipstick number one. Right. And neither one of them has thought about the fact that, you know, they've both had run-ins with Donna and they're going to have to deal with her too. I'll give it to you this way. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. <coughs> Come shoot him. Yup. Did Donna just get another person killed? Yeah. <laughs> nah, that, that's a hard one to pin on her. I don't it know. really is. Maybe. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's like this is second body. So now James is off the hook. I mean, you know, she, she's always working the angle, right? What, what story do I tell? <laughs> he needs his suit back. I agree. <laughs> he walked right past Coop and he didn't yep. recognize him. Just 
It's not saying he can't wear his suit. It's not like it's a government issue suit. Right. <coughs> What's that? It's a mask. With glowy eyes. Maria, hello. Maria, good evening. Mm -hmm. Nice sex files reference card. And we knew that. We knew that. So, although um, Shelly doesn't know it, her her problem isn't Leo now. Now it's it's Winda Merle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fact that it's an electrified collar, it's it's very much a literal leash mm -hmm. that he has him on. There we go. Another episode of Twin Peaks. Oops. I saw that one before. You saw what one before? That episode, many years ago. <laughs> well, I know. That's for most of us, this is a rewatch. I'm just you know? saying. Uh, but, uh, yeah, very, kind of, kind of wrapping up the, uh, the, the Marsh, you know, storyline there and, you know, side quest. Uh, there does seem to be a uh, a drive for people trying to get back to some sort of normalcy. Um, a lot of elements um, in, in this episode are people trying to get their lives back to back to where they were, right? So you have uh, you have the somewhat resolution of the uh, dissociative episode uh, by Benjamin Horn, you know, trying to. You know, with with the help of his uh, family and, and friends trying to get his head together and, and get him back on track. Um, you got Shelly now returning to the Double R Diner um, because now she doesn't have to take care of Leo. Someone else is kind of doing that, right? Um, and uh, uh, as, as you point out, other people are, are trying to progress and move on, but... Uh, you know the past is kind of coming back to 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 pull people down again. We got Winda Merle coming back for for Cooper. Uh, all of that back history. We got Eckert coming back for Josie. Um, a lot of themes kind of uh, repeating themselves here. So there you go, Josie. Yeah. And the pussycats. And I would say with Josie, too, she's another one who, who very much like uh, that Marsh woman. Uh, you do have a little bit of sympathy for her. She's very much a victim. But uh, I'll, I'll, she's made a lot of her own problems, and she's contributed to the problem herself. She's, she's uh, uh, not innocent, let's she's say. She's trouble. Yes, Absolutely. There you go. Mm. So, any other thoughts? Uh, he picked up a postcard at the end and said an owl. What was the significance of that? The owls are not what they see? Well, uh, I, she's right. Um, the, so, we have come to associate the owl with the spirits of the lodge, specifically Bob. Uh, so, I'm guessing that's a little bit of foreshadowing. Uh, Bob is not gone. 
you no. know, uh, and and he will be back. And Wyndham Earl is going to cross paths with him. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, as we all learned from Ghostbusters, crossing the streams is bad. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. You never yeah, cross the stream. Going to be crossing some streams. Yeah. All right. Well, this okay. was this was the uh, the ending of one plot line, the whole um, James and Evelyn Marsh plot line, and yeah. uh, I, I don't I don't think it goes anywhere after that. I think this was pretty much it. Yeah. Unless I'm I'm forgetting something. And uh, we're on to uh, what will become the main the main thrust of. Uh, the season uh it's just basically holmes versus moriarty cooper versus um when yep uh we have the whole situation of it's starting to look like josie shot cooper um yep and uh of course we still have her dealing with tom Eckert and uh yeah and of course there are going to be a uh, a couple of other characters who are going to uh <coughs> pop up and get involved and uh i don't want to give that away just yet until we get there right. but there's right, going to right. be a couple of familiar faces who are going to uh show up yeah and um one in particular i'm very happy to see um <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 quiet okay you're hosting the show calm down <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's your Steady show. Steady on. Do whatever you want to. Steady on. Lady V might get jealous. No. Uh, <laughs> sorry. By the way, where's Lady V? <laughs> yeah, not anger. here today. Um, they, Let her know we uh, missed well, her. Hey, um, you may have. Um, all right. Uh, well, that's one thing I do want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all. Uh, everyone who was in the uh, chat. Um, everyone who is uh, following along on Rumble, um, Troy, how are we looking on? Um, how are we looking on Rumble? Um, I who's, uh, have. Who's there? Uh, I don't know. Let me go take a take a take a take okay. a look here. Um, I saw some some comments come in from somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Ah, so we, no, we are, I don't we see I don't see anything going on in Rumble. But it, it, the big reason that I needed to share it on Rumble is this way uh, I don't have to try to physically back it up later on. That's the yeah. pr primary reason that I've been uh, uh, putting stuff on, on Rumble that way. And yeah, I, uh, I definitely want to do more, uh, more on Rumble this year. So certainly something to consider. Yeah. Um, I, I want to do some rumble exclusive type stuff because there there are some things I'd like to go into that uh, YouTube does not necessarily approve of. Um, censorship is real, folks. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Especially uh, uh, especially now we have uh, I. Not trying to get too pull. No, uh, nah. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, this is not that show. Um, just, just uh, uh, by by way of uh, analytics. Uh, so it looks like it was Curtis Selby, uh, PJ from Orville Nation, and Maria T and Telly uh, commenting in uh, my YouTube stream. But let's face it: when you're reading it in Streamyard, it doesn't really matter where it's coming from. It's all like it's one conversation. Indeed. Job, folks, I own stock in Rumble, so yes, please let's do more Rumble. Indeed, right on. Mm. Uh, Curtis says I did a post on censorship. If anyone has the patience for it, right, I have to check that out. Interesting. Good. Good. Right on. All right. I I think that uh, about uh, wraps it up for uh, 
this episode. Like I said, aside from uh, uh, the Evelyn Marsh storyline uh, being cleared up, this was um, what I would consider a shoe leather episode. You're, you're kind of setting some things up uh, that are going to come to a head at the end. Of the, they are basically, from this point on, setting up the ending of the season. Yeah. There's no Andy. No, there was no Andy this week. I mean, well, there there are so many characters mm -hmm. at this point that you, that you kind of have to uh, remember and you have to juggle. And um, we're like I said, we're going to get a couple more. And uh, and when we get to season three, there's also going to be some new characters as well. So uh, that's true. That is I'm, very uh, true. I'm looking forward to see. So. Uh, in a, in a way, Kathy Selwyn shows up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she does. Um. I, I did do the mental gymnastics. I could not think of any way to, to warp in my mind how she could be the same character, but it doesn't matter. Hmm. Well, if, uh, if my theories concerning season three are correct and uh, based on some discussions we've had backstage and listening to some other people I, I'm beginning uh, there's a very big piece of the puzzle that's now in place no, I, but like I said when we get to season three I'll start laying out my theories but not until then um, but kids um Buckle up, because if I'm right about season three, mm -hmm. it's going to be a roller coaster. Yep. <laughs> so, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I can tell you with certainty, even if he's not right, it's going to be a roller coaster. Yeah. So anyway, once again, folks, thank you all for being here for sticking with us every week and uh there is much more to come yeah uh, like i said we're we still got the rest of season two there's still season three we're going to revisit fire walk with me we're going to be discussing uh Mulholland drive later on possibly also inland empire because um I guess that might fit in up to a point too. I, I mm -hmm. have not seen Inland Empire in its entirety, so I can't uh, really speak to it. But uh, it's one of those movies I always kind of wanted to get to, and just uh, I never got around to it. Yeah, it is available on YouTube. Um, and of so, course, uh, I will be hosting it here as we watch. <laughs> yes, for your convenience. And then, of course. We still have, we still have the books to delve into, which is a whole other, yep, a whole other layer. Uh, yep. We still have, we still have the Agent Cooper autobiography. We have, we have his tapes. Um, we also have the final dossier in those books mm -hmm. as well. That, um, so, yeah. Um, so there's going to be. When when this season ends, there's much more to the story, <laughs> and uh, some of it I'm going to be seeing for the first time. So we're going to have that added benefit. Mm. All right, all right. Yeah. So uh, I do want to acknowledge everybody uh, that I saw in the chat. If I missed anyone, I do apologize. We had uh, FKHC two thousand five, aka Tim. We had Curtis, Lester, Connie, Big Out Presents joined us, Dee Dee Myers Jr., Sci-Fi Mombi, um, JPRPH1, Disney Sheep Herder was here, uh, Penny, Oroville Nation, The Lady Mist, Real Wade Nation Gaming Clips, and uh, Maria with T and Telly. All right, so we will go uh, uh, one time around the horn. Troy, what's coming up? Friday night, I, uh, I'm i going to have, uh, and this was again, I want to thank Boomer for brilliant suggestion for topic. 
after we talked about canon films last week, uh, we said the, the natural progression. We need to do a retrospective and a little bit of a history dive on the, the rise of cable television. Um, some some great memories from from our perspective mm -hmm. for those of us who remember a time before there was cable and uh, now we're kind of actually seeing uh, I believe the end of cable yep so uh, so we're gonna kind of take you through that a little bit look at uh, how the entertainment industry has been impacted by it and like I said there's gonna be some fond memories there too to share with you that's Friday night on last call 9 central 10 Eastern. That's what I got coming up. All right. Nutter. Well, let's see. On Thursday things this week, my special guest will be Maria with T and Tally. I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to having her on and just catching up because, well, she's already way surpassed all of us. Yeah. <laughs> she and hasn't forgotten the little guys yet. See, Maria loves me. <laughs> yep. Um, and then on Saturday, we will be watching, I forget what year, but it's Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. I want to say 2004. Am I wrong about that? I could it sounds right. Um, yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. I think you got the. I don't have it over here. Oh, no. You don't. Okay. No. That's okay. That's okay. It's the, it's the remake, not the original. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's Thursday. So it doesn't I mean, that's, count. That's Saturday. That's Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, Saturday. Um, and of course, I'm co hosting on uh, of Troy's last call with Troy Pacelli. Yep. I'm she'll be there. Also on, um, of course, Spark 21 every Tuesday. Yep. Um, I think that's it for right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Boomer. Oh, or shall uh, I say Mr. Squirrel? Why? Oh, any? No, like I said, uh, I'll be on with Troy on Friday, and you can catch me again on uh, Sunday for Geeky Geezers, and uh, that'll be at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Central Standard, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard, right after your uh, unscripted show. Um, and I'm trying to think what we're going to talk about. Uh, I did send you some articles, didn't I? Uh, yeah, let's take a look. What, what do I what do I got here? I uh, guess it's still early in the week. That's that's the thing, yes. right? So we uh, we're looking at uh, Star Wars Outlaws community. Uh, manager uh, Shauna Jones appears to have animus against white men in yeah, numerous social right. media posts. Yes. Yeah, that's yes, that's great. Uh, and I think this is going to become a recurring theme, this whole idea of uh, you can discriminate against nobody except uh, uh, one certain very specific right. demographic. Um, uh, I guess The Rock gets a little bit uh, political. I suppose, or yeah, kind of. And a follow-up on the uh, copyright lawsuit, uh, Paramount and Top Gun. We talked about that. A yes, while we back. did. Now we're going to have the, the final the final answer about it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's that's just where we're starting out. There's going to be a whole whole, whole lot more that's between great. now and then. I'm sure, more involved. So be sure to tune in. Company. Anyway, yep. That's it. Yep. Sure. All right, uh, that brings it around to me. Yep. All right. Um, what show am I not on this week? <laughs> right. Uh, all right. I am going to be joining Jedi Bill uh, 4.30 Thursday afternoon for Action Theater. Uh, we are going to be watching The Beekeeper. With uh, Jason Statham, right? It's a uh, it's cool. great action movie that I was in earlier in the year. See, and, uh, <laughs> I'm in it with Jeremy Irons. You might you you might remember him from his uh, his magnum opus, um, Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. Great movie, classic. Yeah, classic movie. Yes. Um, yeah, as you can hear, Mr. Statham may join us during the course of that uh, broadcast. Um, all right, so uh, 
let's see, that gets me on over to Friday. I am going to be joining Big Al Presents for a special Friday night edition of Films with Friends. And we are going to be watching your Hunter from the Future. And um, from what I understand, it's a cross between Conan and Star Wars. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, isn't and, that uh, Thunder the Barbarian? <laughs> um, sure. Why not? And, I always uh, felt that Thundar the Barbarian was actually a cross between Conan the Barbarian and Star Wars. I mean, literally. Oh, for sure. And uh, hopefully, um, Soundtracks with Birdman will be able to to join us for that. Um, I, I know he's uh, I know he's on the guest list, so to speak. And it's been a while since I've been on with him, so it would be cool to touch base, uh, or touch base, or base. Uh, I am from Beish. Yeah, I am from the Gap Club. So sometimes uh, <laughs> things come out sound like this. Sometimes I can't do esh. Um, okay, so that gets me on over to Saturday, um, where uh, if all goes as planned, I will be joining Jedi Bill for a round or three of uh, after hours karaoke. So catch us there. Um, We'll see how quickly we get the stream demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that gets us on over to Sunday for uh, Western Cinema Presents. And we are going to be watching The Return of Sabata with Lee Van Cleef. Mm, nice. uh, which, is, which is the third in the Sabata series. Um, also, uh, Unscripted. Uh, which is going to be an episode entitled uh, Falling Stars. And uh, I'm going to uh, go into why uh, most movies these days seem to be uh, one and done. And uh, why I am going to change my rating system because of it. So uh, stay tuned for that. Of course, that's the precursor to Geeky Geezers over on Boomer's channel at 9 p.m. And then uh, rejoin me um, what, about an hour, half hour, hour uh, later, depending on when you guys finish up, for the other side of midnight, which will be, if I remember correct, episode forty-seven. So uh, nobody, uh, no uh, guests lined up for that just yet, but uh, the week is young, so we'll see. And then Monday. Um, Still going. <laughs> Mystery movie night at the Regal, uh, 10 p.m. Uh, I'm flying solo next week because Sin will be uh, off visiting family. And, uh, of course, that brings us right back here to Tuesday. Uh, right back here, same bat time, same bat channel. Um, for uh, the next episode. All right. Any last words? Um, the owls. They should sell stuffed owls at Twin Peaks, like in the in the shops. What do you think? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, that's all. <laughs> Flappy is not what he seems either. Hey, <laughs> he's complicated. Mm hmm. <laughs> I will agree with you on that. Yes. All right. Uh, I just want to make sure um, everyone uh, subs to every member of the chat as well as every member of the uh, every member of the panel as well as every member in the chat. There we go. Uh, and if you think you're sub, please go back and double check that you are still sub because YouTube. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Okay. I would like to uh, remind everyone. Uh, who's uh, watching uh, our pal Big Al Presents has a new 10-word review uh, for the movie Monkey Man um, written and directed by Dev Patel. Looking forward to seeing what his thoughts are on it because um, I've heard a lot about it. Uh, some good, some not so good. So... Uh, check that out 
and uh, also uh, our pal 32 Flavors of Nick Weiser is also live right now with Toxic Tuesday. Uh, Burt Reynolds Month continues, and the gang is watching White Lightning. All right. And welcome to the uh, show, Jack. Uh, where are we at in the show? Uh, tonight was uh, Slaves and Masters, uh, episode 15 of season two. And uh, that was that was something I was getting at too. This obvious slaves and masters. You see Wyndham Merle and Leo Johnson, but then you also see uh, the situation with uh, with Josie and with uh, Evelyn mm -hmm. uh, also uh, falling into the whole slave and master paradigm. So that's intentional. Yeah. The uh, the title for this week's show was uh, App. Uh, to say the least. All right. Well, that is it for tonight's show. I want to thank everyone uh, who joined us on on Twitter, including uh, Real Wade Nation Gaming Clips. Um, everyone who is following along on uh, Rumble and uh, on Troy's channel, and as well as uh, Netters. And um, uh, Boomer, were you simulcasting as well? Um, yes, yes, yes. So, okay, shout good, good. out to everyone who joined us there. We're maximizing our scatter zone for this show. Indeed. <laughs> All right, so uh, Netter, would you like to go out with your... Uh... Yep. Uh, Work your up to you. you don't need to make it closer. <laughs> you keep pushing it by closer and closer to me. Like, they can't reach you, that's fine. <laughs> we can talk amongst ourselves, and that's all well, good, and fun. But it is so much more fun when you guys are joining us in the chat, and you're dropping your comments, questions, trivia, being goofy, whatever it may be. And it doesn't feel like we're separated by miles or continents in some cases. It feels like we're all hanging out in the same room, enjoying each other's company, and having a great time. And you guys, you know you're not just our friends. You are our family. We love you guys, and we appreciate you so very much. You could have been anywhere tonight, and you're here. It is so encouraging. And it's not just encouraging for the panel, it's encouraging for the chat, because you guys are talking amongst yourselves, you know, you're greeting each other, you're showing the love. I just really love seeing that. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for encouraging us and the chat of other chat members. I hope you have a great rest of your week. We will definitely see you on Thursday, I hope, on Thursday things for my guest, Maria with T and Tally. Yep. And until then... Good night and God bless. And for tonight's update, <laughs> it is 10 12 p.m. on the East Coast on the 9th of April, and it is 61 degrees outside. I thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> and as I always say, Thank you all very much for joining us. Please hit the like, share out the stream. If you are new to our channels, please subscribe. And uh, please check and see that if you are subscribed, um, that that is still the case because uh, YouTube will uh, unsubscribe you without your permission. So please check. You've made this show a success. Um, I know it's very niche, but uh, we found some fans and uh, we've uh, got some friends, uh, some new friends, some other channels that we've met because of this show mm -hmm. and uh, who hopefully uh, later on will be able to join us for an episode or two. And as for me personally, you are all the reason why I do this. My channel continues because you come back week to week and show by show. And I really do appreciate it. So uh, give yourselves a round of applause because uh, you deserve it. 
from HQ. And all points north, south, east, west, and beyond. Good night. Take care. Stay strong. Because this is how we win. Was it seduction or illusion? Deception or murder? Nothing is what it seems in a town like Twin Peaks. Starring Kyle MacLachlan, Michael Anke, Lara Flynn Boyle, Sherilyn Fenn, and Joan Chen. Now you can fall back into the mystery or begin your search for the first time every Tuesday night with a new episode hosted by a panel of superfans. Watch live for the audio commentary. No one is innocent 